You're watching KUAM News Extra with Sonia Arcan. And welcome back. As stated earlier, the necessary funding needed to conduct Guam's homeless count was provided by way of Guam's Housing and Urban Renewal Authority. But because Gora does not have the financial wherewithal required to complete the project, the Salvation Army of Guam Corps has agreed to take on this massive effort. Here to ask for the public's assistance in getting the job done are Salvation Army representatives Simeon Keeling and Gail Hargreaves. Again, thank you very much for coming in. So, what do you need by way of the public's assistance? How can the public reach out and help you in this process? Uh, we're still looking for people to volunteer in this uh, homeless count. Uh, aside from the uh, volunteers, we also need uh, uh, food as donations because uh, we're going to be making bags, you know, bags for the homeless people. Um, included in that, in the bags, going to be food. Uh, linen. Uh, we're also trying to get some uh, health and hygiene stuff um, and other needs that, you know, that are donated. Now, I have to admit, um, being raised um, in the military, we lived in many different uh, states throughout the United States, and um, I have to admit that almost every state that I lived in, it was pretty evident what the, you know, who a homeless person was and, and, and their actions. But here in Guam, I have to admit, I almost rarely see a homeless person. Therein lies a challenge for you. How do you go out and seek and find who is homeless on Guam? Uh, recently, we, Gail and I have been involved with the uh, Lighthouse Recovery Center, which is also part of the Salvation Army, and we do uh, outreach. Uh, so we, from doing all the outreach for the homeless, we've learned to identify who they are, uh, because sometimes, like you said, it's difficult to identify or know who they are. Uh, but just by where they hang out, uh, we've learned the loca certain locations where they hang out, and also. Uh, the types of clothing they wear, and a lot of them are very uh, open. You know, when we talk, we approach them, they automatically say that they are homeless and they need assistance. Now, do people also contact you and let you know that, you know, there is a homeless family, you know, in Jigo, but, but it's hard to find them, and then they kind of describe the area? and, and if they do that normally, should they be contacting you before the 25th to let you know where these pocket of areas are, um, are located? I mean, you, could you use that type of assistance? That would be great if they, you know, we start receiving the, those kind of information. At the same time, uh, that information can also be shared with their mayors. Uh, but it would be also great if they call our f number and uh, let us know so we can start charting down these locations. Now, give us an example, if you will, some of the places that most people here on Guam would not know that homeless people live. Uh, a good area like uh, in Tumon, uh, the old park, the parking area where it was supposed to be an hotel, uh, I guess the earthquake destroyed that area. So the parking structure, it's still there. Uh, it's right between Taichi Hotel and uh, the old Fujita area. I see. And that parking structure, uh, if you go there, you find so many of them sleeping there. Get out. Okay. Yes. There can also be a mm -hmm. number of um, people being housed on, on benches in the Ipau area. Um, we have seen some in abandoned buildings. Mm -hmm. um, down in the Aganya area, there's times yes. where people might sleep beside uh, different different I know the ITC at times in Guam's history has seen some homeless in that area so there's a number of different places that people will sleep for the night and and it, a lot of the times it is rotational they do move and they migrate depending upon what might be going on in the local area at times where they have fairs or large fiestas based on different villages you will find that homeless will sleep closer to those areas because meals could be provided um, they could get food or other items from individuals that are passing by now I know that 
This isn't something that, that is new to you because you guys deal a lot with the homeless Salvation Army does, especially with the Lighthouse Recovery Center. But once a year, you also have the Thanksgiving dinner and the Christmas dinner and stuff like that. Are those statistics that you pull out from those dinners and you know offering free dinners to people also assist you by way of knowing where these people are at or who they are? Uh, yes and no because uh, we don't keep the, um, you know, record of uh, who's see. coming to receive just the assistance. Numbers. They just come and we give them the bags, and so we know how many bags were given out. So there we know that, uh, you know, how many uh, bags were given out. So that's how many okay. uh, homeless people we served. We also work very closely with the um, mayor's council and um, the mayors themselves in the different villages because a lot of the times by working closely with them they will be able to pinpoint and send us to specific areas that have been reported to them. And then give, giving credit where credit is due, you also have a homeless coalition which I yes. mentioned earlier. Who are the partners within the homeless coalition that help you guys out? Uh, again, the Kura is the lead. Uh, we have Sanctuary, uh, we have TISIT, Catholic, Social, Catholic Service. Social Services, Oasis Empowerment Oasis, Center, Mental Health, am I missing somebody? And anyone who wants to help you with this contribution, they can also call you and, and tell you that they'd like to be on that list as well. Yes. Yes. Okay, we appreciate that. Now stay tuned to KWM News Extra as we continue our interview about Guam's homeless count after this quick timeout. Please.